So let's start off by talking about OFTV. So for those of you who don't know, it's OnlyFans actual like uh, mainstream, totally safe for work site. And they have a lot of like really cool shows. And one of them is called This Is Fire. It's a cooking show. And it um, puts various like performers against each other. If you remember, we had Riley Reed on last time. She was the winner of last season's. And this season, it's Luna Star. So tell us a little bit about that show and like, how you got invited, and a little bit about the process. Well, I was uh, hosting the AVM, and Alex, he came up to me and told me about these shows. Uh, he told me about a different show uh, in the life of uh, mm-hmm. same yeah. same platform. And then he mentioned the cooking show, and I was like, oh, I want to do the cooking show. I know I can cook really good, but uh, I never be in a competition. But I just thought about, like, if I had to do anything— I would prefer to do a cooking show Mm because I know like I did it for fun. I honestly didn't even know I was going to win money. So I was when I saw when they told me it was going to be a a, this amount of money. I was so happy about it. But I honestly did it just for the fun part. And I was so impressed with myself that I won. And I know I always cook good. I make all my men fall in love through my cooking. So Mm -hmm. that always helps. And but I compete against a lot of girls that in social media, cook all the time. Mm-hmm. So I was definitely very scared. And every single episode, I was impressed and, and surprised that I won. Yeah. So it, it was like one of those things that I never really won anything in my life like that. And it just makes me so happy. I don't know. It was like, even when I won the last episode, I cry a little bit, like genuinely cry because I didn't even believe it. Yeah. It was kind of cool. It was so, super cool. So tell me how the competition works. So the competition is like they have like eight different chefs and they put you one against each other and and it's like a like a football you will you get selected whoever wins go against each other and mm-hmm. um, it's just a process of a couple of days and do they like tell you what you have to make or they get you like certain ingredients no, like how does that work we don't even know who we go against it and we don't know what we cook him and okay. I think that's the most scary thing yeah that you just show up it's like a fire kitchen or hell's kitchens okay I think it's the same producer that produced that show so it's a very high TV show. It's very like when I saw it, the cinematography, the like you can tell it's incredibly. Oh, highly they produced. did so good. They have yeah. such a huge talent behind the cameras yeah. and the set is amazing. Yeah. And so yeah, it was it was so impressive. Like even when I remember my first episode, I was like, I want this kitchen for me. <laughs> it was that good. It yeah. Was, it was an impressive thing. And I was so happy to be part of it. And you know. So you get to set and they say, okay, you need to make this. Because I don't honestly watch reality cooking shows and I know they are all a little different. Like some of them give you certain ingredients and you have to like make something up and other ones give you a main ingredient. So they do like basically it's like a regular TV show. You go get in the, in the seat, you talk about it before. And then, then you go to the kitchen and they just give you a basket and it's a surprise. They tell you what the uh, play is supposed to be like, mm-hmm. but you can switch it up mm-hmm. with the main ingredients. But mm-hmm. the winning part is to have every ingredient they give you to be used in the play. Okay. And I think that's why many episodes, like, I couldn't have last. But because I used all the ingredients, I won that one. So if you don't put all the ingredients in, are you automatically disqualified or you did it just dock points? No, I just I kind of dock points. Meaning, okay. like, if it's, like, a tie and you have one extra ingredient that you're supposed to and the other one didn't, mm-hmm. then you win. Gotcha. Okay. Like, for example, when I went against Sherry Devai, like, our plays were both good, but she forgot a cream inside her... Uh, Sharifa French got dough. the cream? I know. She that just doesn't put sound <laughs> like her. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just like, oh, both of us messed up and we had to do everything for scratch again. Yeah. And the only thing that I know how to make is really good cream. So my cream was delicious. <laughs> and that's what made me want that episode. If not, mm-hmm. it would have been super tight in that one. Because her play was so pretty. What do you think was the best um, dish you made? I think it was the last one, the one that just came out with Riley. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was her Brancino. I think from all my plays, I think that was my... A one. Okay, so so you won um, OFTV, and then you went up against Riley, who was the winner from last year. Yeah, because every year you go against the winner of the other year. Okay. So I went against Riley that she won last year, and I won that one. So you went like twenty thousand dollars to win the show, mm-hmm. and you get extra ten thousand dollars if we won the super finals. Oh wow! So that was a little extra. I was like, oh my goodness, what is going on? And I watched every single episode, and uh-huh. I saw Riley cook. And I was scared. I was super scared because she cooks really good. But I brought my flavor in it, so <laughs> she couldn't beat that. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lily. I love you. <laughs> so a Branzino, that's something that I usually avoid ordering because it's like, it's the whole fish. Yeah. And it's much. generally like 
It's a lot of work. To well, eat. I never cooked that in my life. Anything okay. that I cook in this show, I never cooked it. Okay. But I'm really good at like inventing. Okay. So I just cooked it like I would cook just a regular fillet fish. Mm-hmm. I just put the same ingredients and mm-hmm. it'll make the whole thing. And it looks really nice. How long? When did you start cooking? Like when did you learn how to cook? I think like all my life, like I'm from Cuba and my family, I never gonna forget this. We used to get a beach house in the summer and then all the family would go and and stay for a couple of weeks in the beach. And my parents and my the older people would get drunk since like mm-hmm. 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so like, you know, they would cook some of the main steam, like big pots for everybody. But it got to the point that they would tell us like, if you guys are hungry, you need to figure out how to cook when you're very young. And you're like in the kitchen, like, what am I going to do? So like kind of you, you, you see how they cook and then you just start cooking yourself because it was like, they're drunk. Mm-hmm. We want to eat. So it start cooking. And I think I learned it like that. And my grandma, they all cook so good. So I think just washing them yeah. and being poor and basically like having three ingredients in the fridge and figure out how to make that at dinner. Yeah. And I think that's why I was always been good at it. Not to know the plate, just figure out how to make something that is a potato, make it that potato taste the best. Mm-hmm. And what do you think is like the one thing that people don't know about cooking or like is there like a secret trick that a lot of people aren't I think into? for me it's like people follow too much recipes okay and we all come from different backgrounds so we all have different spices that we like mm-hmm. I think diversity of spices is what makes a really good cooking like okay. for example like I don't know how to mix this spice with this spice well what I do and I did in this show you can see it clearly crazy I put everything in my mouth because I don't know the name of the spices so I will cook like a basic thing uh-huh. and then I will get a spoon and I'll try a little spicy and I try and I'm like, mm, this doesn't go well. And then I get another spoon and I put a different spice and I would be adding and adding until I could combine a good flavor. Okay. So that's kind of like the best thing and mostly like the top chef that I ever like on Michelin star. That's what they will do. They just experiment with different flavors. Right, right. So what do you think is like your best dish just Overall, like outside of the TV show, just what's well, like the Luna Star specialty? Before all of this, before I was vegan, before I'm not vegan anymore fully, but it was seafood pasta. Okay. Because same thing, I, you know, when you go and get a seafood pasta at any restaurant, they just cook all the seafood together and they throw it in the pasta. Mm-hmm. What I used to do, I was cook every seafood separate mm-hmm. and then I'll cook the pasta and then I bring all those flavors together. So when you eat it, the, the, the squid doesn't take the same as the fish or the shrimp. Every mm-hmm. single thing in the plate tastes different. So when you just get one bite, you're like so many flavors mm-hmm. and your mouth. I always think about a ratatouille in the movie. Like he gets a little piece of cheese in the thing and like, mm, all the colors <laughs> comes out. So I'm always being into the flavors and mix it all like together. So that used to be my favorite dish to cook. Yeah. And that's what I make many guys fall in love with me. <laughs> mm-hmm. I feel like it's more than just your seafood pasta. I know, I know. But it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, but my mom always told me, if you can make a, uh, a guy loves you cooking, they're probably going to love you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you go crazy on them, like, okay, at least she cooks good. 